I'd like to show you some tools that I like to install when I'm doing software development on a Windows machine. So the first thing is Git. Um, Git uh, is a source control tool that you might be familiar with. And the obvious reason for installing Git is so that you can use the Git command line source control tool. Um, but it's not the only reason. So um, to install Git, you just go to their website, Google Git, go to downloads, download the installer, et cetera, et cetera. All the default options, that's all good. And once you've done that, if you open up something, something like PowerShell or CMD, you can use Git, which is cool. But there's more. So Git also comes with a, uh, a shell, Git Bash. So Git Bash, like PowerShell or CMD, is a, uh, a terminal program where you can type things in and you know, invoke programs, give it commands. You can do bash scripting in this. So that's another reason why installing Git for Windows is great, because now you can run simple bash scripts even if you don't have access to um, the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, in addition to Git version control and bash scripting, you can also use um, the Git bash terminal to access SSH and SCP, which will allow you to um, log in to remote Linux servers, which if you're doing web development in something like a Python or Ruby is great, and also SCP so that you can copy files to remote servers. So it actually packs a lot of utility for, uh, for one tool. So I strongly recommend giving Git and associated tools a go. So um, now if we have a look, we've got this Git bash shell. If you're doing some other scripting automation or running a command line in Windows, you'll also have PowerShell. And then um, there's also CMD, which is the sort of legacy Windows uh, sort of shell program. And so if you're doing stuff in PowerShell and Git Bash or Git Bash and CMD, it can be a bit of a pain switching between them. Or maybe you want to run multiple windows, running two PowerShell windows at the same time. It's kind of a bit of a pain. And in general, these shells are just kind of ugly. Like this blue is terrible, sort of hurts my eyes. So it'd be nice if there was a tool that helped us manage all of these terminal windows, customize them, and just sort of make it nicer to interact with them. And that's the second tool that we're going to have a look at, and that is Konemi. So um, despite their kind of ugly website, Konemi is a beautiful tool. It allows you to have multiple terminal windows in one sort of window and uh, gives you some great shortcuts as well. So I, yeah, go to the Konemi website, download, install. Um, and there's one thing I recommend you do after you've installed it. So once you installed it and launched it, um, I recommend you go here into the settings and you set the uh, default shell thing to PowerShell with admin privileges so that you don't need to uh, like make sure you run as admin every time, which you usually do. So that's a good one. And there's heaps of you know, options for customization if you are into that sort of stuff. So Conemu is cool partly because it just runs PowerShell by admin as default, which you know, it just opens up and says, do you want to run as admin? Yes, which is much nicer than having to right click on PowerShell and forgetting to do that sometimes. In addition, ConEMU uh, allows you to open up multiple windows of potentially different uh, shells in the same window. So for example, uh, let's try PowerShell and Git Bash in different tabs, which is cool, but even better, you can also use hotkeys to open up windows um, or just split the screen like this. So this is Control Shift E and Control Shift O, and I've just got three PowerShell windows which I can use. But wait, there's more. Con Emu also gives you a hotkey, Control Tile, which I think they call the, the Quake thing or whatever, which allows you to minimize it and maximize it just using that hotkey, which is super sick if you're um, doing some code editing or looking at a web page and you want to jump into your terminal and you can just press that and it's there for you. So yeah, I love Conemu. I think it makes doing um, development in from the command line in Windows much nicer. So the next thing we have is Visual Studio Code, which surprise, surprise, if you Google Visual Studio Code, you'll get their website. It's pretty easy to download. And it's my preferred code editor in general. Um, I think it offers a nice sort of trade-off between being relatively lightweight and um, having a lot of cool features. And so if you just install that, um, 
yeah, it's it's nice. There's not too much you have to do to it, but I do enjoy installing the Monokai ST3 color theme, which is just a personal thing, and then all of the, like, uh, you know, I typically install the Python language extension and whatever. So you can do heaps of customization of this as well if you're into that sort of thing, and depending on your language, it might be a good idea. Um, and one cool thing you can do with Visual Studio Code as well, if you're running Con Emu or any terminal program, um, it puts itself on the uh, path of executables. So you can go into your um, project of choice, like here's my code project Autumn, which has a bunch of Python in it. And you can just run code dot to open up the project in Visual Studio Code. And there's all of my stuff there. And this, I just, the one thing I hate about it is this stupid welcome screen. Um, there you go. And if you want to open up a specific file, you can do code, for example, requirements.txt, uh, can't type, can't order readme, whatever. And you can open up specific files in Visual Studio Code. Cool. Um, I guess one little tip, which is tiny, 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 you might already know this, but if you've got multiple windows in Windows, if you hold down the Windows key and then press left or right, um, you can just move the Windows render like this, which is great for managing multiple windows. Um, so we've got Git, Git Bash, the ConEMU shell emulator thing. We've got VS Code installed. Um, I think now's a good time to show you some PowerShell stuff. So um, PowerShell is probably the most, uh, it's, it's my preferred scripting terminal language thing for Windows uh, over CMD because it's just a little bit nicer. It integrates with the .NET stuff a bit better. Um, and uh, there is some stuff you have to do to get it working the way you want. So the first thing you do when you open up PowerShell as admin is you do set execution policy. You can press tab to complete that. Um, and you want execution policy of bypass. And the reason you run this is because PowerShell, when it first starts up, is like really paranoid and it won't let you run scripts. Um, and I'm talking things like uh, you write a PowerShell script and then you want to execute it later. You need to run this first. And uh, you, when you run this for the first time, you only need to run it once. It'll say like, do you accept? And you just accept and it's fine. And then you can run scripts like, you know, foo.ps1 or whatever. Cool. And the second thing that you should do for PowerShell is edit your profile. So PowerShell comes with an environment variable of dollar profile, which uh, is just some random ass file in your documents folder. And you can use Visual Studio Code to open that up. And you'll see it should be empty if I haven't left any crap in there. Yeah, and it's actually a file that doesn't exist yet. So um, Visual Studio Code's just created a new file for you, which you can then save and hopefully that works. And you can put PowerShell code in here. So like write host scream good morning at you. And this script will run um, every time you open a new PowerShell window. So let's open a new PowerShell window here and it will scream, good morning at you. This is a great place to put um, any function definitions that you like to use lots or any setup, which we'll use in a second. So that is our PowerShell profile. And you can just edit that by doing code $profile and get rid of that if you don't like it. Cool. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is a bit of Git stuff. Um, right now, I'm in a Git repository, Autumn. So if you ls git, you can see that there's a Git folder in here. Unfortunately, if I wanted to know uh, the status of this Git repository, I'd have to do git status. And if I want to see what branch I'm on, I'd have to type git branch, which is very laborious and shitty. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. We can install posh git which is a nice little uh, module for PowerShell, which allows you to um, just view the status of your Git repository from the command line. So if you go to the posh, posh git GitHub and navigate this very detailed, but a little bit uh, overwhelming documentation, you can install it. So it's using the install module command, which I think comes built in with PowerShell rule five. Um, and I just found that this allow pre-release thing didn't work for me, so I'm going to get rid of that. But otherwise, that should be good. So this downloads it from the internet and puts it somewhere um, on your computer. And it's usually very slow because downloading stuff at PowerShell is always really fucking slow. But I think I already have it installed, so that's all good. It usually asks you 
do you accept, blah, 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 and you just say yes. So once you've installed that module, you can then use, surprise, surprise, import module, push it. Once that's, fuck you, okay, yeah, push it. All right, and this gives you this nice little prompt here, which tells me that I'm a branch master and there are no changes. If I uh, new item, foo, make a new file, foo, it's told me there's a new file with no changes and no deletions. If I, I don't know, let's mute something. Let's completely remove the tests folder. Um, I'm going to regret that. Now let's remove the readme. Uh, readme. So that now there's uh, one change and one deletion, and git status will confirm this. Oh, we can't see that. Let me just push it up. So we can see foo's been deleted, and I mean, readme's been deleted, foo's been added, and that's showing up here. Um, we're going to reset, and we're going to remove foo, and it goes back to normal. And we can change branch. Uh, so do git branch, and uh, git checkout. That's a branch. All right, we're going to change branch. It tells us we're in this other branch instead, not master. Sometimes you forget you're not a master. This is a nice reminder. Master. Cool. So that is posh git, really useful. Only problem is we open up a new PowerShell window, it's gone. And this is bullshit. We don't want to type it, like import module, blah, 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 blah. Every time we open up a new window, that would be a pain. And this is where the PowerShell profile comes in. So let's use Visual Studio Code to open up our PowerShell profile and import it there. So import module posh git. There you go. Now, every time you open up a new PowerShell window, it's going to run that code in your profile and import, no, if, you, if you type it right, it'll do it. So that was an error. And it's because I tried to import modile. How do I spell module? Okay, let's try again. All right, new PowerShell window, and it automatically figures out that it needs to load my personal profile. And if I CD into a Git directory like bottom, uh, then I've got my posh Git all set up, which is cool. Right, um, so one more thing. Um, installing stuff on Windows can be a pain, having to Google things and um, manually click the installer and it's kind of just a shitty experience. Whereas on other platforms, they have Homebrew on Mac, they've got Apt on uh, Linux and all sorts of other shit as well. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if we had a package manager that let us install stuff on Windows? Well, the good news is we do. it's called Chocolatey and it's actually pretty good. So there's Chocolatey here, it's at chocolatey.org and it is very simple to install. Um, you just click install now and they say just, yep, so you need to set your execution policy and blah, blah, blah. Oh, God. So you just copy paste that script and it will download their installer and run it. And if you trust these people, that's fine. If you don't trust them, do not do this because you're giving them all sorts of permissions to do shit on your computer. In my case, I trust them. So I'm going to copy that script from their, where was it? Chocolate.org slash install. And then uh, you just copy and then Go to your kind new thing and right click to paste. And then you can see here it's setting your execution pol execution poly to bypass, which we already did. It's going to set some crazy.net shit to allow us to use HTTPS. And then it's going to download the installer and run it. So that's it. That's installing chocolate now, which is pretty cool. So while that's happening. So Chocolatey um, has a sort of package repository that you can just search uh, for like everything, which is a tool we're going to install soon. Oh, no shit, it's done already. It is now ready. Okay, we'll get back to that in a second. So Chocolatey, um, usually when you install it, you should create a new window just to make sure that it's all set up properly. And you can check it out with Choco. And then you can start installing shit. So Choco install package name, blah, blah, blah. Which is great because you can install things without having to like download an installer and click at the executable and all that. But you can also script this, which is great for setting up new Windows machines from a script. And if we go to the Chocolatey website and search for everything, which is another tool we're going to use, we can just 
do choco install everything, which is cool. Um, so let's give that a try. Fingers crossed. So it goes and gets it from the internet and downloads it and ba, ba, ba. would you want to run the script? Oh yes, please. There you go, it's just downloading and installing it. Cool, it's booting it up for us. Cool. And now if we press Windows and search for everything, there it is. So this brings us to everything, which is um, like Windows search if Windows search wasn't a piece of shit. So this is from um, a group or a person, I don't know, called Void Tools, which provide this. And you can also just go to their website and download it. You don't have to use Chocolatey. Um, but this is like really good search. So if we wanted to see where the Git executable lives, you can see I have one in C program files, Git bin, CMD. I've got like 10 of them for some reason. Um, so if you're ever searching for a particular file or something by name, uh, do I have SSH on this computer? Uh, you see. Yep, I do. It's in several folders. Um, do shit like that. Often you need to find things, put them on your path. You need to find particular DLL files if you're doing .NET development. And this is great for actually finding shit without having to use the totally broken Windows search. Right, so that is all the tools we're going to go over. We installed Git for Windows with Git Bash, allowing us to do version control, run bash scripts, SSH, SCP. We've got ConEMU, the terminal, terminal emulator, which is a much nicer, um, more ergonomic terminal experience. We've got VS Code for editing code. We've got uh, our PowerShell profile set up. We've got posh Git for seeing what's going on in our Git repos, chocolatey package management, and everything for file search. And that should be a good start. Um, the one other thing I want to mention is I'm recording this video with Loom, um, which they're not like paying me to say this or anything. It's just a fucking sick tool for um, recording videos just off the cuff. Um, and I recommend you give it a try if you need to show someone else how to install something. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, good luck getting all your tools.